Hi, and welcome back to Codemaster Coach, your medical coding tutor. First, I want to say thank you to all of my new subscribers. My channel is finally growing. Um, so welcome aboard, and to all of my subscribers that have been on board with me, we've done a lot. New subscribers, you got a, a lot of videos to go back and review to get caught up, but this is a, a ride that we're going to take together and we're going to learn how to do medical coding. So let's get started. In today's video, we're talking about the alphabetic index. Now remember I said ICD-10 is split into two volumes. Your tabular list, which is volume one, that's at the back of your book, is the actual listing of the code. But your alphabetic index, which is at the front of your book, volume two, is your alphabetic listing where you would go to look up the diagnoses that would then give you the code to, for the disease process. Okay, so your alphabetic index consists of an index to disease and injuries, an index to external causes, because remember, with coding, we code the extenuating circumstances behind the disease process. If today you have a broken arm because of a motor vehicle accident that you were involved in, not only do we code the fractured arm, but we code the fact that you were in a motor vehicle accident, whether you were the driver or a passenger. Where was the accident? Was it on a street? Was it in somebody's yard? Um, did you hit another vehicle or did you hit something stationary like a tree? Um, were you on the job? when you did it. All these extenuating circumstances behind um, disease and injuries, we code those in our external index. And then there's a neoplasm table. Cancer has become such a big diagnosis. Cancer is all over the body. And so imagine trying to list every cancer of your body, every bone, every organ, etc. So instead of trying to list in alphabetical order, they just had have a table now and we we're going to go into detail on each one of these but there's something called a neoplasm table to help you define these these particular cancers and then there's one more table of drugs and chemicals where we go in and define whether it was a an intentional suicide attempt due to a met did you take Xanax as an overdose or did you mix Xanax with alcohol and didn't realize it was going to cause an adverse effect or um, did a child go into the mother's pocketbook and take a birth control pill? Um, different, there's categories, and we're going to discuss each one of these indexes, uh, disease, injuries, external cause, um, index, neoplasm table, and the table of drugs and chemicals. But just know that they're in the volume two that's at the front of the book. There's a, um, it's in your index. Your alphabetic index covers all four of these areas. So understand that your alphabetic index includes a main term, a subterm, and a more specific subterm. Okay? Remember a main term identifies the disease process, headache. Subterm indicates the site, the type, or the etiology of the condition. So if I say tension headache, we go to main term headache because that's the disease process that's going on. But tension describes what type of headache you're experiencing. So tension would be a subterm under the main term headache. And then a more specific subterm would be indented two more spaces under tension. So it kind of does like a ladder effect where the furthest, the first main key term is your specific diagnosis, but each time it indents further and further, you get greater and greater specificity of that diagnosis. Um, now there are some exceptions to that rule, and those exceptions consist of like congenital conditions. A congenital condition is a condition that a person is born with. Um, a lot of times you have the chromosomal um, factors that play a role when you have too many chromosomes or when you are born with a deformity of a bone those are under the main term anomaly a-n-o-m-a-l-y which means that 
this is not a disease or a process that the patient has picked up, you know, along the way. They were actually, they came into this world, they were born with it. That's an anomaly. Um, conditions that affect pregnancy, childbirth, and the purpurium. And you have to think about those phases because that's, I always tell my students, two people are involved, not just one. You have the mama and the unborn child. So these codes tend to take precedence. So we tend to look for those conditions under a particular main term. Is the woman pregnant? If she is, look under pregnancy. Is this a condition that affect, was affected during the childbirth? And if that's the case, we look under delivery because it's during the particular delivery did she um, go into cardiac arrest or whatever. So if that's the case, we look under delivery complicated by. And then purpural is the phase from delivery to six weeks after the woman has the baby. Because a lot of times the woman's body is healing after the delivery and the time period given is up to six weeks after. So anything that occurs during that six week term is usually indi it's indicative of the fact that she just delivered or she carried a baby for the last month. Correction, nine months, ten months. And therefore her body is now going back to its pre-pregnancy phase. So a lot of times what's going on during that six week term is because of the pregnancy or the childbirth. So we identify it in under the main term purpural. Okay. Complications. We have patients that have like trachs or feeding tubes, gastrostomies or um, dialysis catheters in their arms. They don't actually have a disease process going on. For some reason it gets blocked or it gets pulled out. There's some type of complication because of that device. So in order to identify the disease process or what's going on and because it's not an actual disease process, we look under the main term complication. Complication of what? So your main term be complication, gastrostomy. Um, malfunctioning, etc. You'd look under the main term complication to try to describe what's going on so that we can give it, assign it a code. Okay? And one other area is late effects. A lot of times today you'll experience something, our patients tend to experience something because of something that happened before. You ever had an injury to your arm and gunshot wounds, for example? tend to hurt years later. So in that case, it's a late effect. So when they come in because of a pain to a gun uh, arm that was shot or had a bullet in it or got shot, it's considered a late effect. Our coding has to identify the fact that the gunshot wound didn't happen today. It happened a year ago. So when we want to say pain in the arm due to a gunshot wound, we need to go to a late effect so that we're identifying the fact that it didn't just happen, but today they're having effects because of it. And that's where you go into the late effect terms. And a lot of times that's considered a sequela. Sequela. That means a late effect. Scars, you know, scars build up on your arm. You have scars on your arm from something that happened before, and all of a sudden today that scar just goes to hurting. That's a sequela, that's a late effect. That's something today that you have because of something that occurred and there's no set time period, six weeks, a year. No, it happened before and today you're having complications because of it, but yet we can't say that that injury occurred today, but you're having side effects of it. So we make our code say it's a sequela of a previous injury. So those are the exceptions to where you go just to the main term, subterm, and the more specific subterm, you'll go to the actual congenital condition, which is anomaly, or a condition that affects pregnancy, childbirth, and the purpurium, and you look under those terms, or complication with the trach or the gastrostomy, or late effects, and that's with the sequela. All right, with the main term, remember I said headache, they tend to be flush left, okay, they're in bold print, and they start with capital letter. So headache, 
would be in bold. Headache. Starts with a capital H. The whole word would be bold and it's going to be flush left. Tension, which I said is a subterm of it, will be two spaces to the right. It will be in all small letters, but it's under and it'll be under the main term headache. And so that's your subterm. What that subterm term is doing is giving you greater specificity. And so if there was another more specific subterm under there, that's giving you even greater specificity of the previous subterm that leads up to the main term. Okay? So that's how your alphabetic index is built. And even the subterms, remember, are not bold like that main term and they're flush right, flush right. And each time it goes to the right, it's giving you greater and greater specificity. So I want to give you two examples of main terms and subterms and more specific subterms. And then I want to actually show you okay, a good strong example of all. So we're going to start with appendicitis. Okay. All right, autofocus kick in. Let's see, appendicitis. There we go. Main term, appendicitis. Okay. And notice there's width, perforation, K35.2. That's your code. And see the subterm under appendicitis is width. The more specific subterm with appendicitis is perforation. Another example, so that's a main term, subterm, and I call it sub subterm or a more specific subterm. But notice there's more. And see how appendicitis with acute, amoebic, chronic, all of these are on the same level. Because the more specific subterms with perforation. That perforation applies to with appendicitis. As we go down, acute with peritoneal abscess applies to acute appendicitis. Now that acute and that with are on the same level, but anything under this acute applies to acute appendicitis, not acute with. Whatever's under with applies only to with Okay, and whatever's under acute applies only to acute. And so when we get down under acute and it gets to amoebic, that amoebic has nothing to do with peritonitis, peritoneal with acute. That amoebic applies only to appendicitis because it's indented two spaces over. And all these that are sub subcategories or sub sub terms, sub and more specific subterms, apply just to the subterm above them. Okay? Let me give you one more example. But all those per uh, pertain to the main term appendicitis. Okay? So appendicitis is bold, starts with a capital letter, it's flush left. The subterm width is indented two spaces over, and then Perforation, peritoneal, peritonitis is indented even further to the right from width. And then generalized and localized is indented from peritonitis. And so that applies just to peritonitis. Okay. Give you one more example. Fracture. Main term fracture. And notice with fractures, the main term fracture, it says pathologic. Oh, I can't get a good, there it goes. Ankle, etc. But see how they're indented? To the right from the main term fracture. Now I want you to apply when I go to the term 
Mentoragia. Remember, mentoragia is excessive bleeding. So that's a smaller category that I could pull up, and I just want to ask you a couple of questions. Ooh, let's get it. Come on, autofocus. There it goes. M E T R O R R H A G I A. Metaragia is the main term. Starts with a capital M, is in bold print, N 92.1. But notice climacteric underneath it. It's a subterm. It's describing, it's giving you specificity of the metaragia. So climacteric. Climacteric mineralogia is N92.4, where just mineralogia is N92.1. But menopausal mineralogia is N92.42. But just plain mineralogia is still N92.1. Postpartum, now notice that's the tricky one there. Postpartum, NEC, which is going to be the next video we're going to talk about of these. Um, terms that are used or these descriptions that are used in our catalog and in our indexes and what do they mean. But notice it does not give you a code at the end of postpartum. What it does is it says postpartum NEC a tonic following delivery of oops it's carrying over and that's exactly what it is a carryover line. Following delivery of placenta is 072 or O not zero that's the letter O because remember each one of our codes starts with an alphabet so that's the letter O72.1. So that line, postpartum NEC, is a carryover line because there was not enough room on that first line to give you everything that it needed to say before it gave you the code. It's a carryover line. And then the sub subterm of postpartum, delayed or secondary, is O72.2. And then preclimacteric or premenopausal in 92.4 and psychogenic in F45.8. So metaragia is a good example where it shows you all of the possibilities of a main term, a subterm, a carryover line, and a more specific subterm. So I hope this helped you with your understanding of the alphabetic index. Okay? All right. If there are any other questions as far as the alphabetic index is concerned, feel free to leave your message below or email me at codemastercoach at gmail.com. Okay? All right, welcome aboard. <laughs>